Kirby, that most sportive spirit. And Leo G. Carroll, host to said ghosts as... Topper. This is the office of Cosmo Topper, banker, suburbanite, and currently a man much sought after by Mr. Schuyler, bank president. Topper! Topper! Elsie Warple, keeping an eagle eye on her bank deposits. Uh, Mr. Topper! Uh, Mr. Topper! Uh, <laughs> and George, Marion, and Neil Kirby, three ghosts that only Topper can see or hear. Topper, old boy! Hmm. Guess he isn't here. Well, we'll just wait. And now don't forget to tell him, George. Yeah, I guess I should. Not telling him might be risky. Well, what's the matter with him? Oh, he thought you said whiskey. <laughs> oh, careful, Topper. Be careful. Well, where shall I put it? Oh, any place. Any place till we can get a fix. How can we have a display window when Miss Save for Your Vacation keeps falling over? Poor kid, she's plastered. Perhaps I can get you. Scarlet. No, just uh, call someone, Topper. Oh! Oh, excuse me, Mr. Topper. I thought you were alone. <laughs> well, and you a married man. Oh, don't be silly, George. Let me hold her, Topper. Don't be so eager, George. If there's one thing a ghost can't afford, it's pride. George, Marion, I don't wish to be discourteous, but this is a very busy day. All right, you hold her. Quite all right. It just keeps falling over. Oh, the poor dear. Well, well, please take a seat. Thank you. Whoa, girl. Hey, uh, I was in town having my bifocals adjusted. I think her bifocals need bifocals. And I'm worried about my safety deposit box. Uh, why? Somebody is keeping a valise in it. But, Miss Wobble, you were in the bus station next door. Nonsense. I see perfectly. Uh, are you sure you wouldn't rather I left? Uh, it's all right. I can do just as well with you here. Old Topper needs help. From you? Oh, very handy. <laughs> he thought you said brandy. <laughs> Mr. Topper, banking seems to be very interesting work. I'll take her, Toppy. Only if you get a good grip on it. Don't you ever think of Mrs. Topper? Uh, not while I'm working. <laughs> Look out. Do you want to break something? I hope she does. I have something to tell you, Topper. Quiet. I'll get to you later. <gasps> Don't you dare. <laughs> Don't come near me. Madam, will you please get out of here? George, Topper won't be alone with Miss Warble. All right. I'm taking my friend with me. Don't you think I'm next? Ah! Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's the matter here? Uh, Mr. Skyler, he, uh, 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 young girl, Marion, she, she just went out the door. Uh, water. Water! Oh. Uh, you had a young girl in here? Uh, absolutely not. He did! You can't fool me. I've got eyes like an eagle. <laughs> Here, here, here. Here, 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 here. A man your age, Topper. You have a hard day at the bank, Cosmo. Oh, most fatiguing. 
trouble with figures. Someday they'll appreciate you, Cosmo. After you're gone. I'll get it, dear. Hey, what's for char, puppy? Haven't you caused enough trouble for today? Now, am I to blame for your chasing women? Ah, why? Uh, satisfactory here, sir. George, what was it you wanted to speak to me about today? What's the matter with him? Oh, he saw Marlon Brando in Waterfront. Now he wants to keep pigeons. <laughs> pigeons? Well, you, you tell him, honey. You got nice words. You tell him, honey. What Marlon means is that he entered a contest sponsored by the American Pigeon Journal for the most understanding wife of a pigeon breeder. Oh, well, by, by entry, it was beautiful. You know, and I also put in a picture of Barry in a bathing suit. That might have helped. Well, the whole thing's incredible. Pigeons? Marlon signed your name to the entry. Well, but you can't do that. Why, well, there's bound to be publicity. They'll see Henrietta and they'll know that Marion isn't my wife. No, no, no. Cosmo. No. No. No what, Cosmo? Uh, oh, no, uh, no finger bowls, dear. Remind me to get some. <laughs> they'll see more bowls. Where? On the phone. She thought I ought to know that you were getting familiar in your office today with a strange woman named Marion. Utterly ridiculous. That's what I told her. I said, my Cosmo doesn't even know a strange woman named Marion. I told her. Yes, thank you, dear. And anyway, I said, if I know Cosmo, he'd never be familiar with a stranger. Look, I have an idea how Topper can collect the pigeons. How? Simple. The old skull. Are you listening, Topper? Yes, I'm listening. But I'm not saying anything, dear. <laughs> well, any time you do, I'm ready. <laughs> It's so simple. Look, the editor of the Pigeon Journal expects to see Mary, huh? All right. So you just rent a little flat for a day. We put a few pictures of Marion around the place, and when he arrives, your lovely bride just happens to be out. You accept the pigeons gracefully, and that's it. I don't like it. Don't like what? Uh, oh, uh, uh, the, the, the meat. But you haven't even tasted it. Well, that's a good reason. It's a cinch, <laughs> Tucker. Well, why do we have to have pigeons? They're not pigeons, dear. They're chicken croquettes. Don't you want to be in a love nest with me, Tommy? No. You know, I think you're right. They taste more like liver patties. Topper, you don't love me anymore. Go tickle them, honey. I do love you. <laughs> Marion, stop tickling me. Marion? But that's the name that Elsie Warble mentioned. Oh, what's so funny, Cosmo? <laughs> Elsie Warble. She... She... Stop tickling. Marion, stop. Who's Marion, Cosmo? What? Nobody's Marion, Cosmo. He's already married. <laughs> Come in. Mrs. Topper, it's nice to see you. Sit down. Thank you. <laughs> you and Topper get your shopping all done? What shopping? Why, the reason for his taking the day off. He said he had to shop for some home furnishings with Mrs. Topper. Why, Mr. Schuyler, you know our home has been furnished for years. Yes, I know. I, I must have misunderstood. <laughs> well, is there anything I can do for you, Mrs. Topper? My friend, Elsie Warble, sent me in. Oh, she did. She said I ought to try your Christmas savings plan. Oh, yes, indeed. We have a very good plan. I have some literature right here on it. Of course, that wasn't why she called me. Uh, who? Elsie Warble. She said Cosmo had a strange woman in his office yesterday. Oh? I ask you, what would Cosmo be doing with a strange woman? Well, I'm sure I haven't the slightest idea. So let's talk about the Christmas savings plan. 
Oh, yes, of course, of course. Now, <clears throat> the uh, $3 a week plan, you have the... Elsie uh, called me again this morning. Oh, she did? <laughs> Said she saw Cosmo renting an apartment. An apartment? Silly, of course. What would Cosmo do with an apartment? Yes, I, <coughs> I wonder. <laughs> but she must be mistaken. Uh, who? Elsie Warple. Why, of course. Now, hadn't we better get back to the uh, Christmas saving plan? No, thank you, Mr. Schuyler. I'm afraid not. Well, why? If Elsie Warble was wrong about Cosmo having a woman in his office, and wrong about him renting a flat, is it likely she'd be right about your Christmas savings plan? <laughs> Good afternoon, <laughs> Mr. Schuyler. <laughs> Sure, this will work out. Simple. The editor arrives with the pigeons. We wire him your change of address. He explain your wife is out. He leaves. No muss, no fuss. George, uh, do you think that picture's domestic enough? Oh, it's perfect. To loverkins. Always and always Marion. I didn't think you'd remember that picture, George. Oh, sure. There's only one thing I forgot. Who was Loverkins? <laughs> there he is. You sure everything will be all right? Of course it will. Everything will be all right. Mr. Topper? Horace Pumphrey, sir. Editor of the American Pigeon Journal. Congratulations. Oh, well, thank you. All righty, bring them in. What? What's that? Why, your prize, Mr. Topper, your prize. My pigeons, mine. A happy flock of man's best and truest friend, the homing pigeon. Oh, well, I, uh, I, I didn't think there'd be so many. I think I have a recipe for pigeon pie. <laughs> Now, these birds, Mr. Topper, are all thoroughbreds. Every one is a beauty, of a confirmation of beauty that you will not find surpassed anywhere in the... in the... <laughs> Charming pose of Mrs. Topper. Hmm? Who? Oh, uh, 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 Mrs. Topper. <laughs> yes, indeed. <laughs> she, uh, making herself pretty for the press. Press? Yes. <clears throat> what press? Well, Mr. Topper, we've arranged nationwide coverage. The photographers will be here any minute. Photographers? But that, that's out of the question. Completely. Why? <laughs> well, uh, well uh, Mrs. Topper isn't here. Hmm? I went shopping. Yeah. She, uh, she went shopping. No, she went to Outer Mongolia. She went to Outer Mongolia. <laughs> Mongolia? What's the matter with the local shops? <laughs> no pigeon food. <laughs> Very cheap there. <laughs> Mr. Topper, I don't blame you for hiding her. Don't want her stolen, eh? Isn't he sweet? May I kiss him, Topper? Don't you dare, Marion. Oh, so she is here. Oh, I'm looking forward to meeting your, your little uh, squab. But, but she isn't here. And I don't want any photographs taken. Now, don't be shy, Topper. Let the whole world know that it's the old fox who knows how to catch the rabbit. What's Topper so worried about, George? Pictures. You'd be caught rabbit hunting without a license. No, I think a good pose would be you beside the pigeons here. I'll be on the other side with Mrs. Topper. Oh. There he is, Mrs. Skyler. What did I tell you? Topper, what are you doing here? I saw you rent the apartment. I live right next door. Well, Topper? I just rented a little place for my pigeons. Oh, he's got more than one. <laughs> What's wrong here? You'll find out. But George, Marion, what, what can I do? What can you do? Get back the pigeons. Who's this? Mrs. Topper, Marion. <gasps> Mrs. Topper's name is Henrietta. Uh, Marion was her maiden name. That's not the Mrs. Topper I know. <laughs> there are two? Well... 
vice president of my bank, an out-and-out bigamist. Don't worry, Copper. I'll handle your case. Chopper, just what do you possibly hope to get from this? If I'm lucky, about five years. <laughs> I, uh, I want to talk to you. And I want to talk to you, dear. Oh, what about? The house. I've arranged to have it painted. Oh, uh, this is something else. George, do you think she'll understand about the bigamy? Well, she'll have to forgive him for the sake of the pigeons. Uh, dear, uh, suppose uh, a friend of ours uh, entered a contest uh, and won a prize. <laughs> Some pigeons. Why did he want pigeons? He didn't. Oh? He, uh, he had to write a letter about the most understanding mate. <laughs> Wouldn't the pigeon be the best judge of that? No, you see, accidentally, a picture of the wrong mate, wife, got sent into the contest, and they thought that he had two mates, wives. <laughs> is that bad? Well, of course it is. Oh, I'm sorry, Cosmo. I, I just don't know much about pigeons. We're not talking about pigeons. We're not? Of course we are. You keep out of this. <laughs> Calm down, Cosmo. Your mustache is twitching. <laughs> Don't shout, Toppy. And the same goes for you. Well, really, Cosmo, there's no need to be rude. I'm sorry, dear. I suppose it is difficult to explain. No, it's very simple. If your friend sent in the picture of the wrong pigeon, why doesn't he just change it and send the right one? Hey, that's it. We'll find out where Pumphrey's staying, break into the hotel, and switch the photographs. Judge, you're brilliant. Of course I am. Wouldn't that solve things, dear? Uh, we'll go tonight. All right, but I'm not going with you. I was just going to the kitchen. Come on, Pumphrey. I'm not going. <laughs> but you don't have to. All right, then. Get arrested for bigamy. You win. I'll go. Cosmo, you've been a naughty boy. <laughs> Humphrey, this is the pigeon man's apartment. George, can't you hurry up with it? Oh, don't worry, Topper. Neil is our lookout. <laughs> Just be patient. One of these is bound to open. I, uh, I was born tone deaf. I never could find the right key. Now, why didn't I think of that? Oh, never mind. Let's get in. Oh, Marion, I don't like this a bit. Oh, nonsense, Toppy. It's a beautiful room. like that. You took back my pigeons. I'll have them jailed for this. George, will you please get away from those silly pigeons and find the photograph? Well, Topper, we're just trying to help you, that's all. Well, just get on with it. All right, all right. George, look! The picture must be in there. And we can't open it. No? Child's play. Stand back, everyone. Hurry, George. Just a second. He has now set off a burglar alarm. Quick, out the window. Oh! We're ten stories off. Well, uh, don't worry, Topper. We'll hold the door. Come, come in, Mary. The imbecile, that's the door to the bathroom. <laughs> Ah, caught in the act, Topper. Uh, I uh, just popped in to say hello to my... <laughs> oh, and what is that? 
Oh, uh, uh, looking for pigeon food. <laughs> oh, a likely story. I demand that you arrest this man for breaking and entering, bigamy, attempted safe robbery, fraud, larceny by trick, and obtaining pigeons under false pretenses. Go to work, George. <laughs> Go, Topper. We'll never take him alive. <laughs> I say go to the police, Mr. Schuyler. The man is dangerous. Eh, uh, you may be right, Pomfrey, but we need evidence. Didn't he break into my hotel room to steal some pigeons? Yeah, but in a sense they were his pigeons. What can we do? Well, we... we must catch him in flagrante delicto. Hmm? In the act. Do you, uh, think he'll go back to the, uh, love nest? Miss Wobble has an apartment next door. Excellent vantage point. But will the criminal return to the scene of his crime? You've seen a picture of the second Mrs. Topper? What do you think? I think he's there right now. <laughs> well, what are we waiting for? Is that him? Yes, yes, that Topper. These walls are paper thin. Yes, isn't it awful? Yes. <laughs> Listen, listen. Relax, Topper. They can't prove a thing. Of course not, Toppy. That's all very well for you to say, Marion. You're not being accused of bigamy. He said Marion. She's in there. Well, I can't hear her. She must be in the other room. Well, think of something. How about pleading guilty? Marion, we just can't go on like this any longer. He's planning to give her up. You and George and Neil, it's, it's too much. There are children. Oh, the four of us live in the same house with Henrietta before she finds out. Legally, Topper, they can't touch you. Marion, I think you may be right. How can I be a bigger miss if one of my wives is a ghost? Great oh, Scott, they're planning on doing away with Henrietta. Oh! He may have already done it. Oh, come on, we've got to stop him. <laughs> so the best thing to do is relax, Topper. Chances are it's blown over already. Topper! Where are they, Topper? Who? Your second wife, Marion. And your two children, George and Neil. We know they're here. You were talking to them. George, you never told me Topper was your father. Well, I never even knew Neil was my brother. <laughs> Those who holding out. Now, where are they hiding? Uh, I don't think you'll find them, Mr. Schuyler. They must be in the bedroom. I wouldn't go in there if I were you. Now, Topper, this is for your own good. We're saving you from something worse, much worse. Go ahead, Pumphrey, go ahead. Oh, oh, Cosby, why didn't you tell me we had company? Mrs. Topper. Uh, which Mrs. Topper? Oh, my dear, uh, this is Mr. Pumphrey of the American Pigeon Journal. How do you do? Uh, Miss uh, Wobble, you know, of course, and Mr. Schuyler. What are you doing here? Oh, wasn't considerate of Cosmo. He took this flat while our house was being painted. Dear boy. I just can't understand it. Miss Warble, might I suggest that in the future you get your bifocals adjusted before you make any more rumors? Mr. Topper, there is nothing wrong with my eye. I bid you all good day. <laughs> Masher! <laughs> George is training his homing pigeons. We had one. Uh, from a hundred miles out, they always return un uh, unerringly to this one spot.
This is the office of Cosmo Topper, banker, suburbanite, and currently a man much sought after by Mr. Schuyler, bank president. Topper! Topper! Elsie Warple, keeping an eagle eye on her bank deposits. Uh, Mr. Topper! Uh, Mr. Topper! And George, Marion, and Neil Kirby, three ghosts that only Topper can see or hear. Topper, old boy. Hmm. Guess he isn't here. Well, we'll just wait. And now don't forget to tell him, George. Yeah, I guess I should. Not telling him might be risky. Well, what's the matter with him? Oh, he thought you said whiskey. <laughs> Be careful, Topper. Be careful. Where's my put Oh, any place. Any place till we can get a fix. How can we have a display window when Miss Save for Your Vacation keeps falling over? Poor kid. She's plastered. Oh, perhaps I can fix it. Scott, I'll just uh, call someone, Topper. Oh! Oh, excuse me, Mr. Topper. I thought you were alone. Well, and you a married man. Don't be silly, George. Let me hold her, Topper. Don't be so eager, George. If there's one thing a ghost can't afford, it's pride. George, Marion, I don't wish to be discourteous, but this is a very busy day. All right, you hold her. <laughs> 